does have a book. And it is called No Longer Trapped in the Closet. She's the author and advocate. Please welcome Asante McGee is here. Hi, hey, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What's up? Good morning. Good morning. Okay, Asante, you have a you have a book, and um, you have a book, and it's called No Longer Trapped in the Closet. First of all, tell everybody uh, about you and uh, your relationship to R. Kelly. Um, I dated Rob for a little over two years. In the first beginning of the two years, I was considered what you call a fly-in, meaning that I was able to come and go as I pleased. Um, it was not until he moved me into his house the summer of 2016 when I actually considered trapped. And when I say trapped, I was not held captive. I was mentally trapped. Mm. Okay. So can I ask you a question? How old were you when you guys first met, and how, how did you meet? Um, I was 35 years old, and he had a promo tour for the Black Panties tour in Atlanta. It was a four-day weekend. So I actually met someone from the entourage, and later he into, uh, someone from the entourage introduced me to him, and then I was invited back to hang out with them the Jan January of 2014, the following year. Okay. So hold on a second. Let, let me, let's back up just a little bit and let everybody know. You did appear on Surviving R. Kelly. I did. You were, you were there on it. Who contacted you to, to do that, and why did you feel... You know, why did you do it? Well, in the beginning, I didn't think this is where we would be at today. Um, when I left the house, I had to gather my thoughts. And after being involved with him and witnessing the things that he's done to me and the other girls that was there, um, I felt I needed to contact those parents. Mm. So I did whatever I could to contact those parents. And when I contacted them, I let them know what was going on, but I did not reveal my identity to them because I wasn't sure if they was aware of it and, you know, if they would go back and tell. What was going on in this house? You're saying yeah. it because I'm trying to understand. First of all, where is the house? How big is it? How many rooms, first of all? Um, the house was located in Johns Creek, Georgia. Okay. Um, the house was, I want to say, about seven bedrooms. And each girl, do you guys all share a room or you guys all have yeah. your own room? We all had our own room. Now, at the time, it was only me and two other girls. In the house? Mm -hmm. In the house. And were you guys all considered his girlfriend? Yes. One of them was the trainer. And then the other girl trainer. was, yes. Like, trainer. She, oh, she like, had a she position? Tra like she trained you guys or she was his personal or, trainer? No, no, no. Trainer. She trained us how to please him. Oh, okay. Got you. So hold up. Wait, wait, wait. So you come into this house, you're introduced to another girl, and it's saying this is also his girlfriend. And then this, you're introduced to a woman that says, we're going to train you how to please R. Kelly. Uh. And you were like... Okay. It didn't go exactly like that. He actually introduced me to the trainer April of that year prior to him moving me to the house. Well, Because you were flying back and forth right. to see him. Because yes. you got Did promoted you... from the fly into the... The main girl. So the when main. you were... Live in. Live in. Okay. Yes. When you were flying... By the way, everybody, we are talking to Asante McGee, and she has a book. This is your book, right? Yes. No Longer Trapped in the Closet. You also saw her on the Lifetime Television documentary, Surviving R. Kelly. When you were flying in, did you think you were the only one, though, when you no, were flying in? No, he was honest with me, and the reason why I accept that, because I was in a, marriage, a marital uh, abusive... My ex-husband was abusive, abusive to me. Mm -hmm. He cheated on me, had a baby on me, different things like that. So when Rod was honest with me in the beginning, I respected that because my ex-husband was not. Oh. So, you know, because of who he was, I would have been a fool to not believe that, I, you know, I was the only girl. So right. in the beginning, everything's voluntary. Like, you go there on your yes. own, and you're you're now being promoted. You're being trained how to satisfy him and everything like that. When does it become this whole thing where you're saying you're trapped mentally? Um, By the first week, even the second week. By the second week, I was trying to figure out how I was going to leave that house. Why? It was too much. Um, From rules. If you wanted, he's telling you welcome home. But how is this my home if I can't walk freely in this house? You can't walk. Yeah, where can't you go? Like, okay, it was the rules. So say if I'm, if I want to come out my room, mm -hmm. I have to first text him or call him and say, Daddy, can I come out my room? Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait. Hey, 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 hey. And, and the trainer taught you these rules? Well, he told me these rules. Right. And then the trainer, you know, if, I, if she saw I did something wrong, she'd be like, oh, no, you can't do this. You have to do that. But mm. for the trainer, she was more there sexually than anything. Okay, so then the rule, first rule was you had to text him. Daddy, can Daddy, I? Daddy, can I come out the room? And what else? What and, was another rule? Um, if he did not respond, then I had to come out my room and literally stomp until someone heard me to come downstairs. What do you mean stomp? Like literally knock, uh, like... Stomp on the floor yeah, with your feet, floor, like just stomp. someone acknowledged me to come downstairs. Wow. Okay. I, so how long did you date? You said 2016. 
You uh, met him? No, I met him originally in two, 2013, but we have, we started seeing each... I met him officially 2014, January, mm -hmm. and which I was formally introduced. Okay. And that's when he gave me his number. And then we had our first sexual relationship February 2014. Oh. So is the, is the hype, because a lot of people were asked, because you said you were 35 when you met him, a lot of people want to know... Knowing his reputation and knowing that he has multiple women, why would you do this? Is it the hype of it's R. Kelly? Like, what is what is it about you you allowing yourself to be in a situation like this? Is it is he buying you things? Is he you know what I'm saying? And and one thing I can't I mean him being R. Kelly, like I said, I would have been a fool to think that I was the only person he was seeing. So I respected his honesty. So. Yes, he was buying me things. I mean, it was it was like a normal relationship. I never saw the other girls until moved I moved into, into the house. Even before then, I guess he started introducing me to them. They knew me, but I didn't know them. Ah, uh, I mean, so but you knew. And, and in defense of you, I understand what you were saying because you said, "Listen, I was in an abusive relationship. I was in a relationship where a man had a child on me." So again, you're probably feeling a certain kind of way, and him showing attention. He's a big time superstar and everything else. You were probably a little vulnerable, right? Right then and there, right? Yes. So, so after that, now you meet him, and then you go to you move to this house with him. So you met him in 2014. How long were you there? When did you finally leave? Um, I moved. He moved me into the house the end of May of 2016, mm -hmm. and I left the middle, like the second week of June. So it was that Wednesday before Father's Day of 2016. Oh, so uh, you were just there for a few months? Well, no, I was. I lived in the house for three weeks. Oh. And see, that's where a lot of people get the confusion. They think that I, do, do, throughout our relationship, he abused me. He did not. He did have his control and things, but it wasn't nothing that I felt that was too crazy. You know, texting my whereabouts, let him know when I'm at the airport, different things like that. Mm -hmm. I felt that, you know, it was for my safety. Ah. So that's the difference, and that's why I, get, I receive a lot of backlash, because, you know, they're thinking that I said that I was with him for the whole time, and he abused me, and that's why, you know... But that's not the case. That's not the case. No. So when you decided to leave, you just left. It was not that easy now. Um, originally, when I was going to leave, he had a show in New Orleans for Father's Day. Right. So I was going to have somebody come and get me there and never return. But I actually got into an um, a altercation with the trainer, and it was like a with huge... With the sexual trainer. Yes, mm -hmm. with the sexual trainer. And one of his assistants was like, Mr. Kelly, Mr. Kelly, Asante and so-and-so about to get into a fight. So, you know, he called me, asked him what was going on, and I told him, and he told me I had a black woman syndrome, mm -hmm. that I didn't like another woman to tell me what to do, especially a younger woman. Mm. And, you know, I'm explaining what she talks to you crazy, blah, blah, blah. She was a female R. Kelly. Mm. What does that mean? Meaning that she's just abusive as he is. But just verbally, control. verbally, and yes. controlling like yes. that. How old was she? Um, at the time, she was like 32. And is she still with him? Do you know? I'm not sure. I, I don't know. You know, recently if she's still with him, but I know when I left that she was still there. And how old was the third lady that was there? Um, the third lady, she had turned. She was 18 years old. Oh my and God! I she just turned 18. I had, I remember seeing her the year before that mm -hmm. summer, and she was 17 years old. So let's talk about that, Asante. We're talking to Asante McGee, everybody, who actually lived with R. Kelly in the house with, what, you said two other women? Mm -hmm. The young girls. You know, you said you met him. You were 35, mm -hmm. right? So he, so clearly, he, he's going, well, he said that in an interview with Gail. I'm like, I'm all, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but here's the thing. Did you see a lot of young girls? No. And see, because like I said, when I was just flying back and forth, I really did not see uh, young girls, I, this, and it's crazy because when I moved into the house, I remember seeing this girl twice prior to me moving in. And when I first you saw see her? her, the first time I saw her, which was in Connecticut, he had like two concerts in Connecticut uh -huh. and in New Jersey. Okay. And at that time, I thought she looked re really young, but I'm like, okay, maybe she just looked younger for her age. She was sitting on his lap. Mm. And so then I saw him a few, I saw her earlier, I think later on in Oklahoma at another concert. And was she sitting on his lap again? No, she was asked because he told me to come into his dressing room, but her back was facing me, and she, he was rubbing on her butt, so mm. I was confused. And she's still a young girl. You're looking at this. Well, yeah. 17? Yeah. And so, you know, and I was confused, and he was like, give daddy a kiss, and, you know, I was just like, okay, what is going on? So it was like everything was normal. Is so I guess that's when he was just molding me to meeting the other girls, but he didn't formally introduce me to her name. So, Asante, is that young girl, is that the one whose parents are looking for her now? Is yes. it Which one? It's Azarel. Okay, who was just on the interview on Friday with Gail King. And yes. she's saying that her parents just want the money. No. 
That's not the situation. And I contacted the parents. And when I contacted both parents and I told them what, you know, he's done to me and what I've witnessed their kids do, I, w I felt that they did not know and they were not okay with it. What have you okay. witnessed their kids do? Um, as far as um, Azarel, I witnessed her perform fellatio mm -hmm. in front of me, his uh, uh, one of his assistants, mm -hmm. and the trainer. Mm -hmm. And we were just all in the cigar room, and I just started hearing moaning and stuff, and I looked up, and everybody just seemed like it was normal, mm -hmm. and no one was bothered. And I'm like, you know, I have a, a teenager, and there's no way I would be comfortable with, you know, somebody watching my teenage do this to any man. Wait, wait, wait. You have a teenage daughter? Mm -hmm. So while you were living away with him, somebody obviously was caring well, for you. Well, this was the summertime. And so that's where a lot of people think that I left my kids unattended. No. When I was dating him and was traveling back and forth, they were well attended, not by my teenage daughter, uh, with a close to 10 years, and also family members. Okay. So this Listen, was the summer. And you live with our